Hey man, uh, good morning, uh, Bible study people. Well, my church family, and to those who want to look on and, and follow along, hey man, today we're going to be in uh, Matthew chapter 24, verses 1 through 24. Hey man, before uh, we, I start off in my Bible study, I always take the time out to pray. So let me just stop and just pray real quick. Father God, I want to thank you for blessing me and blessing us, Father God, with this opportunity to read your holy word. We asking you that you just open our minds and our hearts and give us wisdom, knowledge, and understanding of your word. Father God, we praying that when you do bless us with the wisdom, knowledge, and understanding, Father God, that it become manifest into our hearts. And Father God, that we can pass it on to another fallen brother. And we just thank you. In the name of Jesus Christ, we all pray. Amen. 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 Uh, start, we're starting off verse 1. And it reads as follow. And this, before I start, this has a lot to do with the end times. And this, and like I say, just to give y'all a background, you know, what's going on to those Bible studies, the Bible, Bible re readers, those who read the Bible, and those who may not know, you know, this is Jesus talking to his disciples. You know, they ask him when will the end times be, and he give he give them a, a basic a description of when it's going to be. And, uh, and to those that pay attention to what's going on in the world, we know the end times has been 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 going on, but slowly but surely we get closer and closer and closer and closer and closer. So follow along with me. All right. And it says, and Jesus went out and departed from the temple, and his disciples came to him for to show him the buildings of the temple. And Jesus said unto them, See ye not all these things? He asked them a question. Don't you see all these things? You see all these things? Verily I say unto you, that I means truly I say unto you, there shall be not, there shall not be left here one stone upon another that shall not be thrown down. I just want to take a second to just tell you all, do y'all know some church people? Or, you know, so-called Christians that every time you ask them about, you know, church work like that, they always going off about their building, how nice and how big it is and all this other stuff. And we already know God, ain't, he ain't coming back for no building, we, which we see right there. Jesus already automatically told him, like, look, man, these, these buildings that, that y'all got that look magnificent well like that, you forget about that. Cause it's gonna that's gonna be over with, you know. So I'm just trying to tell y'all, you know, cut that out as far as worried about a building how it looks. As long as uh, the pastor or preacher is teaching true gospel, that's all that matters. And people are learning and coming to the faith. That's all that matters. Okay, verse three. And he sat, and he, and as he sat upon the Mount of Olives. The disciples came unto him privately, saying, Tell us, what what shall when shall these things be? They asked him a question, when shall these things be? And what shall be the sign of thy coming day and of the end of the world? Alright. And Jesus answered and said unto them, Take heed that no man deceive you. I'm going to say it again. Take heed that no man deceive you. So, the first thing before he even revealed all about it was, was coming, he just said, man, just be careful that don't nobody deceive you. You know, so that's, that's going to be the biggest, you know, uh-oh to watch out for. Deception. Okay, verse 5. For many shall come. In my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. Remember that, verse 5. 
Many shall come in my name, saying that I am Christ, and shall deceive many. Remember that, verse 5. And ye shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that ye be not troubled, for all these things must come to pass. But the end is not yet. All right, you see what he said. All this stuff, it, it going to happen, but hey, it ain't yet now. So what you what we see going on in the government and all these wars for oil and all this stupid stuff, it ain't it ain't it ain't yet. You know, it's here, but it is not yet. Okay, we keep going. Verse seven: For nation shall rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom, and there shall be famines, and uh, and pestilence, and earthquakes, in divers places. And divers that it translate to various places, you know, you know, d diverse places. You know, gonna be a lot of earthquakes and stuff going on. There shall be famines, which we already know about famines. And actually, right now it's a famine in the word, as far as people getting to actually reading God word or even want to open up their book. You know, cause they stuck in their phone. You know, and that's another deception of the enemy. He used he used what well we got technology. To deceive you. So like I say, I told y'all from the first from the, from the beginning when we started. Well, when Jesus first started explaining, be careful that no one deceive you. I'm telling y'all, be careful how you how you use your phone and how long you be on Facebook or whatever, Twitter, you know, whatever you be on. And okay. Verse 8. All these are the beginning of sorrows. Now, everything I just read from verse 4 through 8, he said all that, just the beginning of sorrows, in which we in right now. I mean, it's very sorrowful. You know, like, I don't watch the news, but my grandma do, and when I hear it, I just be like, it, it's, no, it's no reason to even listen, because you hate, everything you hear is negative, everything. Not something, but everything. So there don't even be no reason to even listen to it. Okay, so we go to verse 9. Then shall they deliver you up to be afflicted and shall kill you. Now, nah. this is what a lot of people get confused and don't understand with that false rapture teaching. In verse 9, it say, then shall they deliver you. Now, be in mind, now, Jesus is talk, talking to his disciples. You know, he really is. He's talking to his disciples right now. But it also goes for us because think about it. If you read your Bible, Satan, it says Satan go, uh, make, make, you know, goes against the saints. You know, make tries to make war with the saints. How is, who is he going to make war with in, if, if the saints are all gone? I'm just giving you an example. You know, like, you know, people people uh, preach that, that rapture jump. How is the enemy going to fight against, you know, the saints and they gone some kind of way? Just just think about that real quick. You know, so that's like I say, be careful no one deceive you. That is a false doctrine. You know, I ain't going to lie. I got caught up because I didn't understand, you know, I didn't actually study. Well, I studied, but somebody had... I mean, it was just of my own fault. It was just because I didn't study hard enough on my own. But when God blessed me with the wills of knowledge and understanding, and the, you know, and I took the time I actually study and read, and and truly uh, search scripture with scripture, compare scripture with scripture, I came up the knowledge. And that's all I'm asking you all. If you don't believe me, f read read your Bible, find it, find the answer. You know, and like and now we got Google. You can just Type in Bible verses about whatever, you know, whatever you're looking for, and it'll come up, you know, but, uh, okay, now he say, okay, then deliver, oh yeah, and shall kill you, and ye shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake, you know, even though I say he's talking to his disciples right now, but we are, you know, if you're a follower of Jesus Christ, you're a disciple, you know, so you will be hated. You know, and then shall many of and shall many be offended. That means stumble and shall betray one another and shall hate one another. And so in this instance, he's saying. 
It's a and then verse ten is a and then many shall be offended and shall betray one another and shall hate one another. I know a lot of people, man, when this tribulation hit America, it's already hitting all these other countries. But when tribulation, people talking about killing you for who you believe in, all this stuff, you know, you'll see how quick people change. You'll see who really was on was on God's side, who really was just faking and shaking. You know, verse eleven, and then it, and it say, and many false prophets shall rise and shall deceive many. And because look at that verse eleven, and many, this pay attention to how many times. Christ just keep mentioning about being deceived. And many false prophets shall rise and shall deceive many. See? The biggest thing you got to look out for is deception. But only how you can be deceived if you don't study. You just going by what somebody else said. You got to take your own time and read for yourself, your oneself. Don't take my word. You get your Bible. You like, man, let me make sure this right. I ain't going to. I ain't finna depend on him, cause he might throw something in there what he wanted to say. Okay, verse twelve, and it say, and because iniquity shall abound, iniquity is sin, the love of many shall wax cold. I mean, that's going on now. So much sin going on right now. You used to be, you know, and we in the we in the south. You know, most everybody speak to each other. Man, now don't nobody care for nobody no more it's all you know it's all about man it's me it's me or nobody else you know they don't care about what you got going on you your family all this every, every man for himself what's going on right now and it's gonna get worse okay verse 13 but he that shall endure unto the end notice what verse 13 just said that most people don't un, don't get they really don't get but he that shall endure that shall what shall mean past i mean future tense until the end the same shall be saved so you got to go all the way to the end even unto death verse 14 and this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations and then shall the end come Notice what he said, this gospel of the kingdom. He's talking about his kingdom, not Satan's kingdom. Right now, this is Satan's world. Whether, y'all, whether, whether people believe it or not believe it, right now, this is Satan is the God of this world system. I didn't say God's world, this world system. We know that because we see what's going on in government, you know, your neighborhood, police, all this, everything that you know, that's going on around you, you you question, you be like, man, that that that's not even justice. You know, they call it justice, but for who? Is it for you or for them? You know, to make the government look better. You know, it just we we gonna keep going. Now it say verse fifteen. When ye therefore shall see the abomination. Of desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet stand in the holy place say and it, it say it got in quotation mark whoso readeth let him understand okay verse 16 then let them which be in Judea flee into the mountains okay now he's talking to specifically to Israel let him which is on the housetop not come down to take anything out of his his house. Neither let him which is in the field return back to take his clothes. And woe unto them that are with child, and to them that give suck in those days. With a quotation, I mean with a uh, exclamation mark. Um, about okay, about first verse sixteen and seventeen. It say then let them. Which are in Judea flee into the mountains. Let him which is on the house top not come down to take anything out of his house. Verse 18. Neither let him which is in the field return back to his clothes. And all he's saying, do y'all remember the story? If you like I say to my Bible readers and those who may not know, you know it's a story about uh Lot. 
you know, how God was, was going to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah. And God said, hey, look, he sent two angels be like, hey, look, to get them. And told them, like, hey, look, man, we about to destroy this place. You know, you need to come on. You know, God sent us specifically for you. And you seen where his wife looked back. And long story short, she turned to a pillar of salt, you know, because of her unbelief. You know, she, she fell in love with, you know, how Sodom and Gomorrah was, how corrupt and how evil it was. You know, thinking about her house and all this other stuff. And in verse 17, 18, what I just read, he was speaking of, don't worry about worldly possessions, you know, clothes, all that. let that go. Because guess what? It's all about your soul salvation. You know, these clothes, these you know, shoes you got, your car, your house, you know, all this material thing, guess what? It, you can't take none of it with you in, into God's kingdom. None of it. This flesh can't come. None of it. So, we read on. And, and like I say, in verse 19, it say, Woe unto them that are with child, and to them that give suck in those days. The main reason why he say woe, because it's going to be hard. Because you're going to have to make a decision, those who may have children, or, or just recently pregnant, or whatever, you know, whatever. You know, it's going to be hard, because you're going to be like, you have yourself. You can have an ultimatum. Should I, you know, give, serve, you know, the enemy for my child's sake, you know, so my child can have an okay life, or should I be like, you know what? Even if me and my child die, we both gonna make it to heaven. You know, you gonna have to actually make an ultimatum. You gonna have to really have to make a real, true ultimatum. Okay, it's either life or death, and you can have life, but it's gonna be short. You're not going to have everlasting light if you choose to go on the enemy side. And let me go to this reference verse. It's a Luke 23, 29 real quick. And uh, it, it, it explains a little more, you know, about, you know, what that verse meant. 23, 29. All right. It say, for behold, the days are coming in which they shall say, Blessed are the barren, and the wombs that never bear, and the paps which never gave give, gave suck. You know, and what what that's saying is. Oh yeah, and, and let me go back one more other verse. Let me go back one verse above it, verse twenty eight, and it say, "But Jesus turned unto them and said, Daughters of Jerusalem, weep not." For me, cry not for me, but weep for yourselves and for your children. And then that's when it goes on in verse 29. For behold, the days are, are coming in which they shall say, Blessed are the barren and the wombs that never bear and the palps which never gave suck. You know, because it's going to, I'm telling you, it's going to be a hard choice. It's going to be a hard decision to make, you know, for mothers, you know. But if you truly spiritual and you truly, you know, serve our Father, you know, like if you truly believe in what you say, for God I live, for God I die, that'll be an easy decision. Man, it'll be a hard decision. I mean, it's gonna be difficult because you'll be like, man, I hate, but it's, you never want nothing bad for your children. But guess what? You want your child to have everlasting life as well as yourself, and so that should be an easy decision to make. You know, so uh, we re got a couple more verses. Verse 20, but pray ye that your flight be not in the winter, neither on the Sabbath day. For then shall be a great, notice, 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 verse 21, verse 21. For then shall be a great tribulation, such as was not since the beginning of the world to this time no nor ever shall be now if you look up tribulation you know you find you look it up yourself but you know that's great that's great uh persecution great trouble you know okay great tribulation verse 22 and except those days 
shall be shortened. He's saying, unless those days shall be shortened, there should no flesh be saved. Notice what he said. Unless those days be shortened, he said, if they don't be shortened, nobody going to be. In, in those days, no flesh will be saved. But it say, let me read on. Let me finish reading. Verse 22. It say, there shall be no flesh say, okay, but for the elect's sake. Notice what I said, the elect. That mean those who are chosen, those who are predestined. Sake, those days shall be shortened. You hear that? It say, but for the elect's sake, those days shall be shortened. For the elect. Not nobody else, he said, but for the elect. That's, that's chapter... That's Matthew chapter 24, verse 22. Okay, we'll read 23. Got two more verses. Then if any man shall say unto you, Lo, here is Christ, or there, believe it not. For there shall arise false Christ and false prophets, and shall show great signs and wonders, and so in so much that if it were possible, listen, notice how Jesus keeps saying. About the elect. He said, but if it were possible, they shall deceive the very elect. That's if it was possible. But guess what? That's the end of our Bible study. But guess what? The elect won't be tricked. The elect won't be saved. And if, and if you don't believe me, I encourage you, I encourage you all to read up on let me find in my book real quick. I encourage you all to read up on predestination. I wrote it down. But yeah, I, I encourage you to read about predestination. I gotta find it. Give you the scripture for it. Hmm. Well, I guess if I had to do that, I'd just come back with another uh, video. But I just wanted to uh, go over that with um, my Bible studies and. Um, you know, my, you know, my Bible study people and uh, to anybody else who God, you know, enlightened as far as his word. You know, I just want you all, I want myself, as, as what I want for myself, I want for you all. I want you all to make it. I don't want nobody. I don't want to see nobody. So, but the thing about it is, you know, a lot of us have become caught up in this world system and don't realize that. We caught up until it's too late. Notice how I give example right now, and I'm at, and I'm asking this question to those who are looking. How long? How much time do you spend on Facebook? How much time do you spend at your job? When you compare all all the time you spend as far as you know, you doing your own thing on your own time, whatever, and compare yourself. And be and be real, be truthful. How much time you spend with God? You know, I wait on I wait on the answer, but you know, you just ask yourself that, and then you think to yourself, would I would I take somebody in that spent all this time doing what they own what they want to do, but look how much time they spend with me, which is I'm not I don't know your time, but if it's like thirty minutes. Out of a week, you know, and them so-called, well, I send a scripture, I send a, 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 a poor scripture a day, man, that's not God. God is relationship. And I'm trying to, you know, help and teach people, you know, it's about relationship. It's not about, you know, where you come from, your background, you know, what you've done, uh, whatever like that. It's about you making a scribe and a step towards better, you know, to perfect, you know, yourself. Not saying that you're going to be perfect, but you never stop trying. And so I want to close out this Bible study and say, you know, I, I thank you. I love you. God bless you. And I.
pray that, you know, I see you again. Amen.